This film will show you how a roped team of cliff climbers master a cliff face some 300 feet in height. This particular climb is considered suitable for students during their third week of training. Although exposure on the rock face may extend over a period of two hours, there's no point on the climb which cannot be overcome by the application of the basic principles of climbing. So while our three climbers are preparing their ropes and studying the rock face, let's see just what these basic principles teach. Firstly, and possibly the most important, is the conservation of energy. Energy is precious. It may well be most needed just at the end of an arduous climb, and it is most important not to expend it unnecessarily. Energy is best conserved by correct balance at all times. A human being is correctly balanced when standing upright on his two feet, whether on the ground or on a perpendicular rock face. In climbing, the hands and arms are used as well, but the great bulk of the work should be done by the feet. If a man is off balance when climbing, unnecessary weight is thrown onto his arms, and that will mean loss of energy. So that's the first principle. Conserve your energy. You may need it later. The second principle is to make all your movements smooth and unhurried. If you make quick or jerking movements, like this, you'll almost certainly lose your balance. Such loss may be only momentary, but it is bound to result in wasted energy. You'll be able to watch the rhythm of climbing when we see our three climbers at work later on. The third principle concerns the position of the feet. Always keep the heel well down. Your climbing boots are fitted with special nails called tricunis, which are designed to bite into the rock. The tricunis fitted to each toe are the ones most used in rock climbing. If the heel is kept down, it automatically presses the toe tricunis into the rock. If the heel is inadvertently lifted, like this, the tricunis will slip out of their bed in the rock with possible unfortunate consequences to the climber. So there's the third golden rule in climbing, always keep the heel well down. The fourth principle is always to stand upright when climbing. There's a very natural tendency with beginners to lean inwards and hug the rock, like this. This must be resisted for three good reasons. It upsets the balance and thereby wastes energy. It imparts an outward thrust to the feet, and greatly increases the chance of the tricunis slipping. And it also makes it very difficult to watch the movement of your feet, which is in fact the fifth principle. Never make a blind movement of the foot, or it might miss the hold or land on an insecure rock. So these are the fourth and fifth principles. Stand upright, away from the rock face, and always watch each foot movement until it is completed. The sixth rule is an easy and an obvious one. Never make a move without first testing the new hold and proving it safe. The seventh principle concerns the position of the hands. There's a natural tendency to reach too high for hand holds, like this. Although this is sometimes unavoidable, it is bad practice. It forces you to lean inwards and also results in wasted energy. Always try to keep the hand holds about eye level. Below is ideal. You'll have an opportunity to study this when we watch the climb in a minute or two. The eighth principle is one most frequently overlooked and yet it is one of the most important. Only move one of the four limbs at a time and have sound holds for the remaining three. This is called three-point climbing and it ensures maximum safety. The climber will remain secure in the event of finding an unsafe new hold for the free hand or in the case of a foot movement in the event of a slip. The ninth and last of the basic principles is to think before moving. Never make a move that cannot be reversed. And always work out at least three or four moves ahead. Time spent in studying the general direction of the proposed climb and working out the next few moves is time well spent and energy saved. To recap briefly, the nine golden rules of a good climber are one, conserve your energy by balance, 
Two, move rhythmically. Three, keep your heel down. Four, stand upright and don't hug the rock. Five, watch your foot movements. Six, test each new hold. Seven, keep your hands low. Eight, maintain three points of attachment. And nine, plan ahead. Think before you move and never make a move you cannot reverse. These nine principles apply to every sort of rock climbing, with ropes or without, and we'll now see them put into practice and applied by our three-man team. As this climb involves rope work, we'll also be able to study the drill necessary in rope climbing. By now, the leader should have studied the intended climb, and he'll know which route he's going to take. So he should be off any minute. Yes, there goes number one now. Rather a smooth surface for a start. Right, he's got good finger holds, and away he goes. Now, watch his foot movements. Heel down, small steps, keeping his body well away from the rock. See the rhythm of his movements there? There's number two paying out the rope to him, keeping it clear of any snags. Number three waiting patiently. He's got some time to wait yet. There's number one again. Very smooth surface. Not a very nice start for a climb. Notice the way his weight is on his feet. Although his toe tricunis are his only attachment to the rock, his whole weight is on his feet. He is perfectly balanced. There's a ledge just above him to the right. He'll probably make for that for the first belay. Going on up, he's got an overhang above him. No, no, he's decided to belay there. Now he'll take in the slack of the rope and belay around the rock, one of the eight methods of belaying, whichever one he chooses. And then he'll take in the slack, calling down to number two. Pacing in two. When all the slack is taken up, Number two will say, Number one then calls, Come up when you're ready. And number two calls out, Number one replies, aye, aye. And away he goes. Again, this rather smooth start. Small tracuni holds. Very clean the way he puts his toe on the rock. No scratching about. Notice the amount of daylight between his body and the rock. Three point climbing all the time, making sure he's got good firm handholds. Up he goes, another two or three small steps with his feet. Then a fresh handhold again. 